Hi, Coyotes fans. Welcome into another episode of the one-on-one podcast. I'm your host, Luke Kapinski, and we are joined by Coyotes forward, Derek Broussard. Derek, first of all, thanks for uh, for joining us. I know you guys don't get a lot of off days this season. No, not really. And especially this month, we, uh, you know, we're going on the road for two weeks. We were gone for a while, too. And, uh, yeah, just playing every second day, those uh, back-to-back games, they they get you pretty good. Uh Felt like some of the guys were tired a little bit uh, this morning, but uh, we had a day off yesterday, so we should be fine for the next two games. How has that been for you? I mean, you, you come over to a new team, and you're over here in the, in the West Division, and you come over in the strangest season ever where you, you guys are playing. You four games this week. It's four games in six nights. I mean, it's it's that's a fast way to get adjusted to new teammates, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, for, you know, because you're playing every day and – or basically you had the rink every day, but, um, you know, I like the part of being able to go eat with my teammates, whatever it's on the road or at home and spending times and doing stuff. And this year, uh, obviously we're, we're not really allowed to do that. Uh, guys have been respecting the rules uh, pretty well. Uh, that's why we didn't really have any cases in our, in our team, I would say. And, but, uh, yeah, when we're on the road, we still have that lounge. We can hang out a little bit and everything, but, uh, we just try to focus, uh, you know, on our games. And uh, because we play every second day, we play a lot of games. You know, you, if you go on a bad stretch, I think it could be bad for your team for uh, for the standings and stuff. You guys have shown a pretty good ability to, bou- to bounce back this season. I mean, you're going to have up and downs over the course of the year. A couple games in particular, though, there was that week where you were down 3 nothing to Anaheim twice and came back on them twice. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would imagine the second game, they were like, there's no way this is happening again. And you did it. So what does that say about just the general resilience of this group, do you think? Yeah, um, I, I do remember those games. Uh, yeah, I mean, every time you can come back, I, they, they say that the worst thing in hockey is 3 nothing, or, or, you know, when you we have a lead by three. And uh, a lot of times the, the other team, they kind of, they, they're just going to try to cruise through the, through the game. And uh, I felt like our team are, were playing better sometimes when we're, we're down on the score. Um, we started a road trip in Colorado really well. I know they're missing McKinnon and McCarr and a few guys, but uh, we had three out of four points, and I think we would like to, to get those those games back in Minnesota and the next three after that we lost. Uh, those were the big games, and, you know, outside of that, we've been playing pretty good. We know we're close and everything. I know we didn't score much goals and everything, but we're, we're trying to find solution. Now we're, we're, we're scoring. We played some... I'd say like two really good games against Colorado. Uh, probably one of the best three teams in the league right now. And you know, we the next the next two weeks it's it's going to be big for our team. You know, we have to find a way to uh, to come back here and to have a winning record and stay close in the race. You mentioned those games against Colorado. The most the most recent one you guys won. Uh, you won two of the four, but the most recent one. Was that is that up there as as your best game as a team this year? Do you think? Um, I I would think so. I, I, I thought our commitment and our um, compete and the work ethic and being on the same page, I think that was a a complete game. Uh, we yeah we did some mistakes and um, the other team is always like they're they're trying to win as well and. You know, like I said, Colorado is probably one of the best teams. So that was a big test to play them on back-to-back nights. But, yeah, the second one, I'd say, like, guys, like, really put on the line. And, you know, like, guys were just working. And, you know, we wanted it more than them. And that's why I think we came back in the score and we found a way to win in, in shootouts. And, you know, hopefully it's going to give us some some good energy and some confidence. And, you know, we need, we need a good – put a – put a good streak together here in the next 10 games you mentioned that road trip and there was that tough stretch in the middle but I thought it was it was good you guys still found a way to salvage six points out of that trip and like you're going to have ups and downs if you're still getting points when when it's not going your way that keeps you in it right now you're right in the thick of the playoff race but specifically the last game of that trip I mean I know you guys scored that game because you had a hat trick yourself so I mean what, what, what is it like putting up a hat trick in an NHL game and a meaningful one like that where you guys really need mm-hmm. to win back on track yeah, um, I had one in the playoffs, I think, in 2015. Um, but honestly, it was like one of those nights that I was just at the right place at the right time. And I kind of 
you know, with my line mates and my teammates, we kind of execute. Um, yeah, it's just like for like first goal, like Chicken got a, you know, he kind of saw me. I was about by myself in front of the net. Second goal was a, a great play by OEL that just like the, the, the shot pass kind of play. And on the third goal, we just kind of execute off the rush. And uh, I think it it's obviously like, you know, it means it means a lot when the team wins and, you know, I, I think we really need that two points because uh, I think we lost like what four or five in a row in that time and guys were getting frustrated and it was the end of the road trip guys were um, you know excited to go home and see their family and uh, yeah just just means a lot when you, the team's in winning and you can chip in and help the team in any way. I, I want to go back actually to your first hat trick because you said it came in the playoffs I mean it's hard enough to get a hat trick at any level, let alone the NHL. When your first one ever is in the postseason, I imagine that that was a pretty good night. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, it was game six in Tampa. And uh, I do remember that when we won the game, like in seven to something or eight to something. And uh, we had to play those guys uh, on game seven. That was a conference final, game seven. And they beat us 2 nothing in our building. So that's why I remember a little bit. Because we, I feel like we wasted all our goals in game in game six, and we didn't we didn't save any for game seven, and that still stink a little bit inside of me. Yeah, a few years later, that's 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 the true hockey player in you right there. Um, you look at the rest of the season now. There's you know it's a short season, and everything, but you're right at five hundred, just a couple points out of a playoff spot. Do you guys allow yourselves to look at the standings at all, or is it still too early for that if you're a player? Yeah, I think it's still too early and you know that's why I was like when I, I told you the next 10 games but like I think it's going to go down the last week of the season because you know you're always playing this what, like the eight the, the same uh, eight teams and we can say that we're always we're all well, I guess we got one uh, against St. Louis but yeah I think we're gonna some teams were we're going to be done with in the next week or so and uh, so yeah basically we're going to need help from other teams um, our game against St. Louis is going to be really important. I, and all the games that we have left against Minnesota are going to be really important as well. Um, but we got to take care of our game first. got to win our games. And hopefully we can get some help from other teams and see where, where that goes. Have you noticed the difference, you know, playing the same seven teams eight times each? You know, you're not, you're not normally going to see a team, I mean, obviously the St. Louis situation where you played them seven straight times, but even just teams right. you're playing twice at a time, but, you know, now you're getting five, six games in. Is it a point where, like, there's no surprises you can throw at each other? Are the games more physical, or is it just kind of, you know, it's just you're both trying to get through the season and get to the playoffs? Um, I think it depends on the games, uh, who you're facing, but, yeah, like, Let's say like the second game against Colorado, like I felt like guys are getting like on like on each other's nerve a little bit, and guys are kind of yapping at the refs and complaining for yeah you know, whatever like whatever is a cheap shot or a hit or like a a penalty or something like that. But um, yeah, it's it's a competitive league. There's really good teams. There's not one night or you're going to say like, oh, it's going to be easy tonight. Every team's good. Um, even the teams are like lower in the standings. They're, they have good young players. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's a lot different this year, but I feel like we're lucky enough to, to have a season um, to be able to play. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can find a way here and get in the playoffs and give, a, give ourselves a chance. You know, obviously every team's going to deal with injuries. You guys have dealt with quite a few at the goalie position and the Coyotes are a deep team in net. But I mean, to have a guy like Aiden Hill step in who expected to be the number three when the season started and really he's given you guys a chance to win every time. What does that do just for the collective confidence of you guys up front that you're like, you know, each one of these guys we're going through, we're still, we got a guy back there that's keeping us in it. Yeah. I mean, you know, like a lot of times a coach is going to use the next man up mentality and, I feel like, you know, when you have injuries, yeah, it, it, it does suck a little bit. You're, you're losing some key players. We, we lost like OEL when we play St. Louis like seven straight times. Like, um, but yeah, like there's nothing else you can do. You just got to put your head down. And I think it gives like an opportunity to some players or 
some AHL guys you know, getting called up or young players to play more. And, you know, we have the perfect example now. Like, we, we might miss one or two fours. We have our voter goalies, like you said. And I, I think it's a great opportunity for Hilsey to step in and show the entire world of hockey what he's capable of doing. And uh, I think he's I think he's he done it before, too. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's always giving us a chance. In overtime, he's a reason why I think we got – two points against Colorado and on that four on three, he was competing and he made some big save for us and he brought it to a shootout and then we found a way to win. And, um, but yeah, it's just, uh, you know, next man up, we gotta, we gotta go with what we have. And if you ask our, our coach, he's probably going to say the same thing. You can, you can't look back or whatever. You just, you, you gotta go with what you have and we got to put our best foot forward and play well the, as a team and trying to win some games. These shootouts, I mean, you guys have been successful in them lately, but specifically Christian Dvorak, like, I feel like everybody knows the move that's coming. That's such a hard move to execute consistently, though, that guys aren't stopping it. I mean, what are you guys what thinking move? on the bench? What I mean, move are you talking about? Whatever that back out, that backhand shot what? moved. It, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I never seen him doing that. <laughs> the, the one where he just winds up and shoots a slap shot from 10 feet away, right? Um, yeah, it's the backhand, forehand. I don't remember that. Like, I – He's been doing well. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, that's that's reason. That's totally fair. You know what? Let's move on to this thing. Um, you've you've just looking at the cities that you guys you have played in throughout your career. I mean, playing in New York, Pittsburgh, and Ottawa. It's it's got to be a change to now. All of a sudden, you're playing hockey in the desert. And again, I know it's a weird yeah. year. You can't really experience you know Scottsdale and just the city itself. But what's it been like for you, Justin? Now, yeah, it's going to be a hundred degrees here soon. Yeah, I know. It's great. I love this city. And uh, last year, with uh, I think we were 10 of the Islanders players, we, we came here for the All-Star break. So we rented a house and we just spent like, some time here. And uh, we played golf a few times. We, had a, uh, we played tennis a few times as well. And um, I think it's one of my favorite cities in the country, to be honest with you. Just the, the quality of living is, is great. And uh, I live here in Scottsdale and everything. It's... Uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, I love my I love the group that we have, our teammates and everything, our our entire staff, uh, from the strength coach, their our medical guys, from our, our trainers. It's such a good atmosphere in our room, and uh, that's what I, I I told one of the guys because I play for like seven teams or something like that. So like I had a few experience with like other teams and stuff like that. So for me to come here and to see this, I think it's 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 been good. It's been great. Is there anybody on the team that doesn't golf? Like, I feel like if you if you live, I think honestly, if you just play in the NHL, you have to be able to golf, don't you? I mean, that's the only sports that we're kind of allowed to, like, not allowed, but like because of the season and everything. Like in the summer is like when I work out, I I usually just play golf. There's not any other sports. The one thing I want to do when I'm done playing is ski. I never skied in my life. One of my friends was calling me from back home. He was uh in Quebec City and he was like oh yeah I'm here for a couple of days like I'm like I never seen in my life I don't even know like if I would be able to stand on it but uh and I grew up in in the Ottawa region and we had a few uh a few uh, not a resort or mountains or whatever but like I never my dad never brought me <laughs> so uh basically yeah like every every NHL players or hockey guys I feel like they're good golfers in general and uh I, I haven't actually golfed one time here yet this season. Wow. Because we <laughs> practice or we play and I don't want to, I just want to keep my mind off. Like, you know, I just want to focus on what I have to do and everything. And I'll golf once we're done with the, with the season. Makes sense. Uh, Derek, I'll get you out of here on this one just because, you know, Coyotes fans haven't maybe all got to meet you yet. What, um, what were like, give us like a player or two that you look up to when you were, when you were growing up and playing hockey and, and kind of when did oh, you man. feel like, yeah, I'll be in the NHL the way I'm playing? Uh, well, that was later, but actually like the fans, they might know Danny Briere. And oh, yeah. cause me and Danny were from, from the same hometown in uh, in Hall, Gatineau on the other side of Ottawa. So uh, basically, we have 10 years difference. So when he was in junior, I remember my dad was bringing, he was playing in the Quebec League in junior. And uh, basically, my dad was bringing me to see him play. And he was like a 
obviously a big star in there in that league. And uh, I just loved the way he played and, you know, in Buffalo with, uh, with the Coyotes as well. Just a guy with a lot of passion, a lot of skill, uh, a lot of emotion in his game. And he was like really always really good in the playoffs. And that's what I really liked about him. And uh, yeah, that's one of, one of the guys I always enjoyed watching when I was younger. Derek, we hope we see you in the playoffs this year, man. We appreciate the time. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Derek Rosario, I'm Luke Kapinski. This has been the 101 Podcast. Thanks for listening.